Thank you for staying. 20 minutes to write a MySQL shell plugin, and you will see I don't even need that, uh, that much, I guess. Uh, so who knows, my, who never heard about MySQL shell? Never? Oh, good. You should. I've used it on other databases. <laughs> the MySQL shell? No, ah. shells. Yeah, but here is MySQL shell. So unfortunately, I won't talk too much about the, the, the shell, right? Uh, but I will show you how it works, because I was expecting that a lot of people knew MySQL Shell. Uh, if you want to know much more about MySQL Shell, I wrote a lot of stuff uh, on my blog. And I'm from Belgium, so uh, I'm used to the Belgium water that you all had yet last night. So that's why I'm still up uh, at the end of the day. So writing a plugin. Uh, to write a plugin, there are some steps that we need to think about. and. The first one is the most complicated for me, I guess. It's the idea. What should my plugin do? Right? And most of the plugins I'm sharing on GitHub are because people are asking questions on the MySQL community Slack, on the MySQL forums, or at the events. And then they say, oh, I'm trying to do this, on, uh, and I'm not, I don't know how to do it. Then I say, oh, yeah, well, I'll make a, ch a shell to make it easy for you. Then uh, when you have an ID to say, oh, I will uh, create this plugin, you need to find the programming language. So after that, you need to define a file structure that I will show you, then writing the code, which is not that complicated, I guess, and then uh, testing it. Testing it can be so, uh, more complicated when you integrate multiple stuff in your, uh, in your shell plugin. For example, I have shell plugin that shows uh, that interact directly with the MySQL router, or shell plugins that uh, configure proxy SQL that we heard about uh, earlier uh, today. So we can do a lot of stuff with the, uh, with the shell. So uh, the ID, uh, this is the most complicated part. So I was thinking, what could I show? Sh could I show, and that uh, won't take me ages to code for um, uh, for the event. So our plugin will take a variable. Uh, so as a um, uh, as an entry, right, as an argument. And it will display all the information about that. Because maybe, as you know, we keep some information about uh, variables and that are possible to find in the um, uh, in performance schema. So we're going we're gonna to play like that. So this is the ID for today. Then the language. I'm a very poor JavaScript guy. Uh, my friends knowing JavaScript told me it's because I'm too old that I don't get it. but. Uh, I don't get it. So I'm not able to write anything in JavaScript, uh, all this mode, asynchronous mode. I'm still, you know, uh, I learned COBOL at school. So <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, do you know JavaScript? Yeah. Oh, you're a sick Thanks man. Sure. You think you know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but Java is not for me either, right? So, uh, so I, I, I choose Python, right? So this is uh, JavaScript still a mystery for me. Let's go uh, write it in Python, and I think it's easy. And I like the Python dev room, so uh, they are my friends. So I will do it in Python. Python 2, right? 3. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> 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 so the plugin, we need to, um, uh, to put it in the, the, um, our um, user uh, home directory, dot MySQLSH, then plugin, and then the extension there. So this is where it should be located. And this is the files we need to have. Uh, init, to, to create a uh, so underscore, underscore init, underscore, underscore pi, mostly empty. This is just to make the, our uh, object. Then uh, MySQLSH plugin common. You should not write it. I will provide it to you. And I use the same for, uh, every time for every, uh, every plugin. It's just registration and stuff like that. Then uh, usually I use a directory to put my, uh, all the code that it will be related to my plugin. But it can be on, only one file. But I, I, I like to use uh, one directory, so I will call it FOSDEM. Then inside, again, this uh, uh, init to, say, to be able to uh, uh, make a, uh, an instance of this object. Then a real init.pi with some code in it, registration of the variables and the, f the methods. And then some files, and I will call it variables, because this is what we're going to uh, use today, right? So the first one, it's an empty file. Very easy to do. I think uh, everybody can do it. The other one, uh, yeah, it will, 
you can find it uh, on GitHub, uh, or you can uh, copy it. Uh, in, let's say I, I will show you what's uh, what's in it, and it has the, the all the registration of the plugin for the shell, so you don't need to, to do that every time you call the shell, right? Then the code of our plugin, init file again, always empty. So again, something very easy to do, and then. Uh, the, the method registration, so all the methods you're going to create in the, in the real code, we need to uh, register it uh, because which is very, something very nice with the plugin infrastructure of the shell is that it will create, for example, all the help for me. So I don't need to write all that. So as soon as I will register my methods, it will create the help and I will show you how it works. So after, other than that, we need, just need to code, right? So Let's go together. So this is a live demo. I already know Kenny will uh, say, oh, this is why it takes 20 minutes, because I'm very slow to write uh, on my keyboard. For an but let's, let's try it. We're going to do it. No worries. Can you read it? Seems so, right? So the first thing uh, I just said was to have the, uh, to download the, uh, MySQLSH plugin common. I downloaded it earlier on my machine because the network, uh, I was not able to use the Wi-Fi here. So you go in uh, mysqlsh.plugin um, slash plugin, so I'm in, in directory, empty one, right? And I will create also here uh, up my uh, extension folder and the name of the plugin we're going to create today. Okay, for that. Then we will go in the extension. Here you do the way get to get the, the file, but I will copy it from my home directory. MySQLSH. Yeah, I hope you are a developer and uh, it, it's a developer conference. So I, I wanted to make a bit more, uh, you know, some code because we haven't discussed a lot of code today already still, right? So here's the file. Let's have a look what's in it. Well, let's do So it registers the plugins that you're going to create, and this is all the information about the type. So it has just this method about the registration and some help, and that's it. So it just do, uh, do the registration of the of your uh, uh, of your object in the so of the plugin in the shell. So after that, remember. We go in, uh, yeah, I forgot, we also need a very complicated file. I hope you will be able to follow. The, this one, empty, done. That was easy. This is just pure Python stuff, done, easy. So now we're going to create our init file for our... Uh, our module itself, right? For for the plugin we are creating. So of course we can oops, we can create yeah, whatever we want here. I always give the name and then some comment, but we, don't, we won't do that. So we need to call uh, my spell sh plugins common. We're going to import the registration of the plugin. Register plugin, right? And because I know it, because I already tried it, uh, you, you will also uh, call import some of the function that uh, you and of the all the, the elements you're going to do. So usually you do that after when you create it, but for a gain of time. So I will go in my, um, in my object, um, so in my plugin FOSDEM, and I want to import variables. So it's a method inside, uh, and I will call it variables uh, plug. Okay? And then we register everything. This is where the magic happens, because we can give a name. Usually, uh, even if I write Python, when I register my plugin, I always use the thank you the um, 
uh, JavaScript notation, notation, uh, notation, because this is easy. And uh, after that, I don't care if I call, because all the plugins that you created, you can create them as if it was, uh, you can call them as if it was JavaScript or Python. All the um, framework will abstract that for you. So if you create everything in Python and then you call every, you use everything in JavaScript, it will work. And this is what I usually do. I will copy paste because I'm very slow. And we're going to discuss what I've done. And also it will, let's see. Even for copy pasting, I'm bad. <laughs> so, what I'm doing here? Some information. So, here I will say, okay, I will call this uh, module I've created, and then I will call that method. The method is get variable info, and we're going to create it together after. Some information about it, some parameters, one only, which is I will call it variable what it is, so give some information about, what type is it, is it required, because sometimes you can say, oh, I want uh, uh, parameters, but maybe are not needed, so uh, you can't uh, say uh, it's not required. And then the full plugin information, the plugin is called FOSDEM, and what it does. That's it. So this is just in the init, so not complicated, just registered all the methods. So now the real code will be in our variable, Variables.pi. So here is where we're going to create the code. So first thing to do, we just import MySQL SH. So MySQL shell module uh, to be able to uh, make all the calls we need. Then we create our, um, uh, our method, the only method we're going to use in this uh, plugin, which is get variables info. The parameters we, have, we, we, we give and some session if we want to add. But usually we don't, uh, we leave it at none. And if there is, we check here, because we get from the global shell, if we are connected to a, uh, to a MySQL server, we're going to use that connection to do it. If not, we, ca we, can, we could create one. But here is we use the one we are created. And if not, it will complain. I will not create one in my, in my plugin, but it's possible that you could do that if you want. When you have created that, the magic, uh, let's call it like that, or the only code complicated in this case, it's the query. So I want to find that information for uh, information schema, right? And then play with uh, the output and show it to the, to the people. And then it's just some Python processing this information, right? So what we do, so we do the, the SQL, we check if we got some information. We can also use wildcard. So if I'm searching for some variable with a wildcard name, it will say, oh, I found at least three variables that match the query you are looking for. And then for each of them, I'm looking if these are the default when it's compiled. Are they being changed by the session? Are they being changed as a global? Are they being persisted? Because in MySQL 8, you can persist variable without modifying the MyCNF. All that information, we can see it, and that's it. And the, the plugin is created, very, so very small files. And uh, yeah, you don't see maybe at the end. And not, nothing else. Every time I will run the shell, Right, so let's connect to my machine. You see, so yeah, let's see. Yeah. Can you see at the at the back? Or so I'm connected to my machine. If you have some error here, like you make a, um, a syntax error or a typo, you will have an error message that tells you thank you that tells you that you need to check in the error lock of the, lo uh, of the MySQL shell. It shows you where it is to find what's going on, because you may have mm, created some uh, syntax error or whatever. So I wrote the, the shell, uh, my plugin, in uh, Python, like I said, right? But I can also call it, you see? Yeah, you don't see, because let's see if I can make it. I will make it sh shorter here if I find my mouse. So it will be better for you. So 
extension, the tab, it says FOSDEM. Tab, the, the method I have for it, which are get variables or help. I can also do this. And it gives me that info. I am in JavaScript. I can go in Python and call exactly the same way. And now you can see the information, the, the call here, the syntax of the name of the function is not exactly the same because it takes the default Python syntax, right? So let's try to see what, what happens to that. So first, with the help, it gives me, oh, you have a plugin now. This is all the plugins I had uh, on the machine I did the test. And you have also the FOSDEM demo test. Then for FOSDEM itself, you can have a help. Again, you don't have to code that. All the framework, the MySQL shell framework gives you that. And then you have information also for all the methods that you have in your plugin. And when we test it, so I want to test uh, default, uh, find a variable called default with uh, uh, the wildcard and plugin. If on one variable, it gives you the name and it says, okay, this was a MySQL native password and it's global and it was uh, set in etc mycnf. So this is the information that you got from this plugin. Another one, bin log format, it says, okay, I found one variable, the name is bin log format. The row is set to row. It has been persisted. Where is it persisted? You have the file. And as it is per was persisted, it tells you also, OK, it's root at lock at lost that the 12th of April did that uh, uh, persist information. So the shell, it's very nice to use the shell for uh, DBAs or junior DBAs. So the senior DBA can create um, plenty of function, plenty of plugins to help the junior DBA to do their job easily without, uh, because here it's a very easy one to show you in a very uh, little amount of time, but you can do that uh, uh, much more complicated to find. And I have uh, plenty of them to, uh, already available and pull requests are welcome also, but I will show you after uh, the GitHub tree. So when there is multiple variables, it also works like that and it gives you every time What's the value, if it was the default value, if it was compiled or, or not, you will get all that information. So the pull requests are welcome. Pull requests or feature requests, because I, li like I said, the most complicated for me was the ID. So if you have IDs to uh, improve the shell, just uh, let me know. Put it there. And thank you. That's it for me. I really invite you to go check that uh, GitHub repo because we will see very uh, cool plugins that took more than 20 minutes to write uh, that can be uh, very useful. Thank you. Yeah, don't go away. I will give you the goodies. Too late. <laughs>